Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to episode 3 here on my Elm Creek alternate let's play series um gonna feed dog here he comes hello dog out you can do some munching greenhouses are in fine form um I have carried on and played a little bit off camera since episode 2 I have got um trees removed Um, that I wanted to remove all. <laughs> so if we head over here, I'll show you that. Um, so yes, I got me, um, like I say, got me beehives placed over here. Got me lime station placed as well. But yeah, cleared this area of land out down here. So I've got now got room to place my farm silo um so i'm looking forward to that um so sheds silos i'm gonna go for this one I'm going to set it back a little bit. I'm not going to put it right back into the trees, but. I'm going to set it back a little bit. I'm then going to go get landscaping, painting, uh, asphalt. I think this is what I want. Just going to uh, paint that a little bit. Seems like this area is um, gravel. I'll paint some asphalt. Paint some airs. And then uh, do a nice uh, asphalt drive through that's going to be my silo for my farm Dolores's farm a little bit asphalt here and there trim, trim away some of the grass so yeah there's our silo quite nice um and yeah, got rid of the trees, so I've got room as well to place down some other things as we get into it. But as you can see, I've been very busy. I have been very, very busy. Remember when we started to save everybody? Down here, there was all these little fields and all these uh, little, tiny little fields lot. All these different numbers represented a different field. Well, now I have one field, one massive, super duper, awesome Uber field. Um, and I'm currently debating in my head what to do with it. I really am. Um, my initial plan and the one that I'm still kind of leaning towards is the fact that I basically split this one big field up into maybe two or three fields rather than having like you know 10 tiny little 10 small fields just have two or three which will give us a little bit better harvest yield when we come to harvest them um so that would involve then me obviously running some some roads back through where I've 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 been dividing the um the farm up. One of the areas I'm thinking I'm probably going to do it is along here. Um. So basically, in the map is basically run a line along there. So this 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 becomes one field, and then everything in this half becomes maybe a field, 
and then potentially maybe look at running a, a road up there um and then we'll have like one field here we'll have a big field here and then a third field along the bottom um i have yet to come over the roadside here i've yet to come over here and see what is on this land um and what we can do over here uh, all the space we've got um there is currently nothing here but meadow um so potentially i could get my plow out and actually create a field on this land which we could then obviously um because I, I i do own all that yeah i do own all this um currently so yeah i could i could could create another field on this land most definitely which would give us four large fields which would be much much better as far as harvesting and getting crop because the the, the problem with the little fields is they just wouldn't yield anything they won't give us any volume of crops you know you saw in the first episode how pathetic it was harvesting those two fields that we harvested you know literally you drive once down the field and once up the field and the field was done and you've barely got anything in your harvester so i think it's better that we have some big fields you know which again when i think of america i think of big you know everything in america is big you know and when i think of like the farming channels that i watch on youtube millennial farmer welker farmer coal the corn star people like that laura farms they have massive massive fields huge fields that go on for miles that they they harvest and get loads and loads of crop off and yet here in game we're kind of forced to have all these tiny little fields that don't yield diddly squat um so i'm i'm going forward i'm i'm, I'm more inclined to want to buy fields like this along the bottom here and maybe some of the fields bit further up i mean fields in the middle here uh, again around where the um the farm is the starting farm um i'll be more inclined to plow them all together you know 57 is probably a decent size 72 is not bad there's a bit of area there's actually a little bit of area that you could expand that into near the railway silo so you could make that a little bit bigger mm, 56 is probably not bad um but yeah there is rather a lot of small fields um tiny little fields and stuff on the map so we're going to probably be making a lot of our own fields basically we're going to be when we start buying land we're going to buy land and we're going to make fields big you know we're going to go big or we're going to go home now one of the things i've also done since the last episode having sold off my wood chips from cutting down my trees um i've bought some more equipment spent a bit more money i bought the uh john deere the little john deere 6 6 m i think it is tractor yeah the 6 120 m and i've given it a front loader and i've given it pallet forks purely to help me with the moving and distributing of my honey we're already getting quite a lot of honey um from our beehives and that's just like one day um the 6m obviously you've already seen me using this this is this this has been my workhorse um this has done all all the work on the farm thus far this plowed that whole entire field um if you wanted to see me doing that there is a twitch stream up on the twitch channel where i was playing and streaming myself plowing this whole field um because i couldn't play multiplayer the other evening because the giants multiplayer servers have been absolutely uh broken every evening as i've tried to play um farm sim and tried to play multiplayer and tried to get on my server um so i ended up playing here on this map 
last night. So I streamed myself plowing that whole field. Um, and then I've bought this John Deere 7R as well. Lovely 7R machine. So I've got three tractors now, which should enable us to do a fair bit of work. Now, whilst I'm still debating what to do with um, the field, I think one of the things we need to do, obviously now I've ploughed it, is it's covered in stones. So I'm going to go and need to get a stone remover, picker-upper. I have tried rolling, and the roller does not get rid of these stones. These stones must be too big. Um, so they don't actually, the roller has no effect on them whatsoever. I've been experiencing that issue quite a bit. Also, I've noticed weirdly on this field as well. There's areas like here where we seem to have loads of like, um, uh, uh, mushrooms growing. Or toadstools or fungus. Fungi of some description is growing on the field. So we kind of need to, uh, sort that out. So basically, I say basically a lot, it's terrible. When I did my fives training many, many years ago, the lecturer of the fives training was basically adamant you should never use the word basically in a sentence. There's a lot of banned words you shouldn't use when talking to people. Basically was one of them. Um, <laughs> but I always say it. So we need to, we also need to obviously lime spread. Lime spread's gonna be a big thing here. Um and fertilizing as well. So we need to go to the store. We need to get ourselves equipped with some machinery. Probably would have been handy if I'd bought this equipment whilst I was up at the store buying all those tractors, wouldn't it? Hey? Hey? The thing was, I didn't want to spend all my money on equipment and not buy the silo. <laughs> I thought, the silo is going to be very important. So anyway, let's go. We're going to go get a stone picker. Um, and people will say, stone picking again? See, Wally, in your house, Baylor on series, we've seen you do lots of stone picking. Yeah, it's kind of the... It's unfortunately, one of those things that giants have made it quite a big part of your gameplay loop this this year in fs22 anytime you plow cultivate harrow a field you're producing stones and you do have to remove them if you don't it causes your um it causes your equipment to get absolutely wrecked and then you have to pay repair it far more frequently which costs you an absolute fortune so to avoid multiple um, repairs on the same machines and to avoid those hefty repair bills, remove the stone from your fields, folks. Right, stone picker uppers. Now, I should have a mod today. I've already got Stevie's Scorpio mod, which I was using in my Erlengrat save on my Twitch stream last night. But we've also got the... Um, um the the iconic pack um so what we're going to do we're going to color code this make it look a bit more john deerish um so we probably want primary to to be the john deere green actually Probably want the secondary to be the John Deere yellow. Wheels. John Deere doesn't really have a colour for wheels, does it? Uh, maybe we go black. Or maybe we make the actual collector black. And we set the wheels to John Deere yellow. That looks better. I'm happier with that. Uh, decals. Turn the decals off, or we'll leave them on. And then we can change the capacity, so we can have 10k mass, 25k mass, 50k mass, 100k mass. Purchase price goes up massively. 
Um, I think we'll have 10k. 10k. I don't think you'll ever get 10,000 liters of stones off of your field. I could be wrong. It is a big field, but probably shouldn't do. Um, we then also need a fertilizer spreader, don't we? And again, we've got some more modded options now. Stevie's already coming out with a lot of the mods. I was a little bit disappointed um, that Stevie didn't add um, lime spreading functions to these two spreaders. He has done it on the big, the big bad boy though. So. And like I say, we're going to make everything um, Oh, you can now have narrow tires on the big... Is that... Have narrows. Well, we're gonna have narrows. Wish I could change the color of the the cover to make it a bit more like the um the rest of it. Right, there we go then. So we've bought the the lime spreader. I need to bring the six R down for that. Um. And we'll take this back to the farm. And we'll start getting the old stone collecting going on everything. Um, also, I'm just wondering, um, do people like how the game looks currently? If you're watching the video, do you like how the game looks? Um, I've got a couple of filters, NVIDIA filters running on top of the video. Um, which makes the game look quite nice for me. Um, I'm just not sure how it translates into the video. Does it make it look a little bit too bright in the video, perhaps? Um, for me, it seems to correct a lot of the issues that I have with my actual display and my monitor, where it makes everything look very dark. So I'm sat here now and I can actually see things a lot better in the game, but I wonder if because of that, it artificially makes the game a lot, lot brighter. Um, and that but I like it because as well it, it's definitely sharpening a lot of the details I've got a lot of the sharpening being applied sharpening effects I've just run the dog over dead dog everybody R.I.P. Fido Yeah, we've got um, got rock picking. So um, just gonna let a worker take care of my rock picking for now. Like I say, it's a huge field. He's got a lot to do. We will return to the store. Grab our bradle, lime spreader, come back, fill it up with lime, and we'll start doing some lime spreading. Get all the field lined, so it's all at the same same level, same status, and then um, and then we'll set about seeding it. I think what I'm going to do first, I am going to do one big harvest of something i'm going to plant some crop on that field um and i'm just going to do a big massive harvest 
<laughs> just one big massive harvest off that big massive field and then I'm going to split the field up into smaller fields. I just want to see what it would be like to do a huge harvest and just see how much crop we can get off of it. You guys in the in 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 it, watching the video, you might tell me that you actually like the idea of having one big field and we just keep doing we plant a crop, we do a big harvest, then we plant another crop, do a big harvest, plant another big crop, do a big harvest. You might might actually want to see me do that. If that's the case, let me know in the comment section, people. I'm happy to try and be a little bit more um, open to playing um, maybe how you guys and, and factoring some of the things that you guys want to see in this um, series. Compared to how Baylor on where I'm definitely I've got my own sort of roadmap and idea in mind for that series. This series I'm a bit more open to requests. You know? I know some of the uh, YouTubers that do like do, do a system called subscriber contracts where you YouTube subscribers can leave their own requests for jobs and tasks for me to do in the game. Um, if you guys want to do that and start leaving me a few, um, like I say, a few things for me to maybe have a look at and have a go at, I'll be happy to give it a go. Like I say, if we can make this series a bit more sort of interactive, where you guys watching it can sort of steer the ship a little bit and uh, um, steer um, Dolores. Then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a go. Now, the lime spreader, the lime station. Um, I know I've had a couple of requests on some of my videos, where did I get this um, lime spreader from? This lime station, because it's not in the base game. Uh, this lime station was made by um, Stevie. Um, so, I am, I've been using that since last week. You might have seen it in my How Baylor On series. In a couple of, it's available on Stevie's Facebook page on, on Farm Simulator Mods. Over at Farm Simulator Mods. Um, you can download it there. He's got quite a few mods out for FS22 already um, that he's been been doing um, quite a few little bit, a few tweaks and um, adjustments to a lot of stuff. Oh, you know what? It's took the bloody spreading discs off the back. Um. I haven't got me spreading discs, folks. Uh, okay, that's going to require me then to buy a vehicle workshop now then. <laughs> so I want to put it there. Is that maybe chancing things? Whoa, camera collision mod. Not helpful. Camera collisions in this game are a nightmare. As soon as we get the disable collisions mod, that's going to be great. Uh, yeah, I'm going to place that there then. And again, I'm going to do some painting now. Uh, I'm going to go with the gravel this time, I think. Paint my uh, workshop trigger, my workshop area. Yeah, where's my spreading discs gone? Off the back of my um, sprayed bradle. Oh, I ought to really get the um, soften tool out because that's a bit. That 
perhaps a bit irky jerky. Is that not letting me? I'm gonna open the doors, have I? Customize. I want. I want that. That's what I wanted. Game. Oh, what? Now I've lost the top. <laughs> I lost the top now as well. See, now I can hold more lime. I can hold a lot more. Right. Uh, landscaping. Uh, soften. Definitely. Because that was lumpy bumpy city. Bumpy, bumpy lot. Um. I'll be honest, when it comes to these tools, I have a little bit of a hard time deducing whether I'm actually doing the right thing. not leveling that at all mm. it might be that we have to find another home for that because I don't like the fact I can't... I know the game has issues letting you level... I know there's a problem with the game that you can't level terrain around certain decorate, decorative objects, placeables um, that are already in the map or already existing on the map. I know people have complained about that. They've removed items from the map and then they can't... Um, they can't flatten the terrain and stuff. Um, that's obviously a problem. So I probably need to move the workshop. I probably need to put it down here somewhere, actually. Um, like I did with the silo. And then I'll be able to um, edit the, the terrain. Smooth it all out, get it nice and flat. Yeah, Mr. Lime Spreader. Going through that lime. Yeah, you got that weird patch of mushrooms or toadstools. It just flickers as you're driving around on the map, driving across the field. It was ever so peculiar because I got the I was using the plow. 
And I had it set to um, create fields, obviously. Because one of the things I have done is put like new edges on the field and obviously merged all the fields together, deleted all the roads and pathways and stuff. Yet weirdly, when I was going over that area where the mushrooms and that are, it wouldn't actually change the ground to ploughed. Although it says it's ploughed in the map, it was um, only showing it looking like it was cultivated. It was staying like cultivated texture. So, yeah, a bit weird that. But I'm sure once we've seeded it and we've got crop growing on it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. But yeah, this, this little John Deere, it's done a lot of work. Bless it, over the last couple of days. Since we started, it did all the tree. It, it, it handled the... Um, it handled the uh, uh, wood chipper for me. The stump grinder. It took helped me cart the wood chips to the um, train stylo. We then loaded up the train with all the wood chips and sent it off to Goldcrest Valley because Goldcrest Valley was paying the most for wood chips at the time and I I had like 180,000 litres of wood chips by the time I'd finished removing the trees that I wanted to remove from down the bottom of the, the map here um, so yeah um, very very useful and then like I say I've been and bought some tractors, two more tractors, and front loader. I've got a front loader for this with a bucket ready for when I need to scoop things and shovel things. Um, we've got the low loader with the pallet forks, front loader with the pallet forks on the 6M, ready for like moving the pallets of honey. Um, and then we've got the big 7R at the minute which is kind of like my big boy tractor which is going to do like my seeding and stuff uh, this one I think no I didn't put I didn't put skinny wheels on this unfortunately my 6M has got skinny wheels so if I need to do any like fertilizer spraying or herbicide spraying then um the 6M is going to have to do that task because it's got it's the only tractor with the crop friendly um, wheels. Um, and I figured you don't need a massive, massive tractor for spraying. So the 6M probably fills that role quite nicely. Um, in fact, probably fills that role very nicely, I would say. I wish I didn't keep missing bits. Oh, how I long for a guidance steering mod to come out for Farm Sim 22. <laughs> I got a little bit excited today because Mr. Helgi put a comment on my Discord server saying, GPS mod is available for the game. It's now called VCA. I was like, huh? That doesn't sound right. Because I know Wopster's already said, He's working on guidance steering for Farm Sim 22. I was like, why would he change the name of the mod? That people have become so accustomed to. Um, turns out VCA is a completely different mod, not to get confused with guidance steering. VCA is obviously stands for Vehicle Control Add-on, which was a mod that some people used in Farm Sim 19. I looked at it um, because it had... It had um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it GPS as such, but it kind of had like steering lock, so you could lock the steering on a vehicle so it would only travel in straight directions. Um, that was one of the features of the mod, but unfortunately vehicle control add-on did so much more than just that, a steering lock. Um, it did 
it offered like shuttle control and stuff which i didn't like i didn't like having shuttle control on vehicles and constantly having to change between forwards and reverse um and then the, it also added gearboxes and transmissions and gear selecting and all that stuff to vehicles in fs19 long before farming simulator 17 uh 22 should i say decided to have manual gear changing and stuff um so obviously vehicle control add-on takes that whole gear changing thing to a completely different level because it makes all the vehicles in the game have gearboxes that you have to manually shift and for me i'm just not interested in manually shifting in farm sim partly because i'm playing with controller and there is limited buttons on the controller and some of the key binds for gear shifting and range shifting and st direction shifting clash with other key binds that i've already mentioned in my previous videos like the fact that if you've got manual gears on you can't zoom in and out whilst you're driving because the uh, up and down the up and down um, arrows on your d-pad are responsible for shifting up and down gears so you can't zoom in and out while you're driving which i find being able to zoom in and out a lot more <laughs> a lot more beneficial i much prefer to have control over my camera rather than control of gears in a straight it's it's a strange scenario because obviously in real in real life i've only ever driven manual manual geared vehicles cars vans lorries whatever I've only ever driven manual geared vehicles. I've never driven an automatic in real life. You know, automatics aren't a common thing for us in the UK. It may come as a surprise to American viewers out there. But in the UK, we don't do, have a lot of automatic vehicles. Everybody kind of drives manuals. So much so that if you do a drive, if when you take your driving test and you learn to drive... If you um, if you don't actually learn to drive in a manual vehicle, if you decide to have all your less your lessons in an automatic and take your test in an automatic, the license you get given only allows you to drive automatics. <laughs> okay, whereas if you take your learn to drive in a manual, take your test in a manual, you get a license to drive everything you can drive anything after you've passed your test so yeah driving uh driving a um automatic is not a um common thing in the uk but saying that whenever i play video games or play any kind of computer game where there is driving involved i always set it to auto i never want to do gear shifting in in a game and I think that's partly because without actually having a proper clutch, proper gearbox, gear stick, and you've got that actual feeling, that, re that actual resistance, because although there are steering wheels that give you shifter levers, and you can get shifters for various different steering wheels, whether you're Logitech, whether you're Thrustmaster, whether you're Fanatec, whatever, they don't, they don't feel like a actual gear when you're they don't feel like an actual gearbox you know they don't feel like you're actually changing gears in a real car car or whatever you know um it's a strange one it really is uh, like i say so in video games i always love to play with um automatic gears even if i'm playing with a wheel and i've got my wheel and pedals set up I don't do shifting. I don't even use the flappy paddles for shifting gears. The flappy paddles or whatever. I I, I would suit. I I normally set me like if I'm playing farm sim. I set my flappy paddles on the um, steering wheel to do the raising and lowering of my tools and stuff. So like the flappy pa the left flappy paddle will be like raise and lower. So like raise lower plow, raise lower cedar raise and lower combine header um and then on the right hand flappy paddle i'll probably have that set to the key behind to raise and lower all tools 
so that like when I'm driving a mower and I'm operating a mower which has a front mounted uh, you know has a mower on the front of the tractor and a mower on the rear when I hit the flappy paddle on the right I lift both front and rear at the same time I don't have to um, switch between the different tools using the uh, main, uh, the the icons in the top left of the screen and then manually like oh select the front the front mower lift that then switch to the rear mower lift that no i can i can control it all with my single flappy paddle so yeah that's that's about the only reason that's the only use i have for flappy paddle my flappy paddles in farm sim i certainly don't use them for changing gear <laughs> so yeah vehicle control add-on mm, not a mod for me personally i know there will be people that are jumping on it and using it and will be using it um I'm going to wait for guidance. What's does guidance steering? Guidance steering is, is, is what I basically, I know it. I trust it. I've used it. I know how it works. It does what I need it to do. If I need it to do it. And I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to wait for guidance steering. For the time being, I just manually try to drive in as straight a line as possible when I'm doing my spreading, my fertilizing my seeding and uh, we go from there now the problem is because I've, I've sprayed lime all over this field I can't actually see I can see on the left edge there uh, the stone picker upper man hasn't actually picked up hasn't driven on there I perhaps need to go and manually drive down the edge of that bit there on the right once he's finished. And there's a couple of other areas I think he probably missed. There's a little bit over there. Um, probably because I didn't drive in that straight of a line. And I've got some more of them mushroom toadstool things growing. I don't know if they're kind of like weeds. Maybe I need to spray the field to get rid of those. I'm wondering now if I should have put my my vehicle workshop up here. On that bit of land. There. Just off the road. That might have made more sense, might it? <laughs> but yeah, we're getting we're getting lime spreaded. Like I say, we've made quite a lot of progress in very short time. Although the first day here is nearly now over. There was a lot to do on the first day, starting from scratch, getting everything like your house and everything placed, your silo and stuff. I think from day two onwards, I'll turn the time scale up a little bit so the days actually start ticking by a little bit faster. So we don't do three or four videos on the same day. You know, we'll try and get through things a little bit faster at a faster pace. Um, but yeah, for day one, um, I've had to play on real time just to make sure I've had the time to get everything done that I needed to do to get us started. So getting the house, moving the trees, removing the trees to let me place my house, my greenhouses, my dog kennel, my beehives, and then um, starting to plow this field and then stopping to remove more trees so i can place my silo and then i've got space to place other things and then coming back plowing finishing off plowing this whole massive field um 
and then um, we're now lime spreading, stone removing. Like I say, we're going to do probably one big harvest to start with on the map, on this field. Um, and then we're going to split it up, break it up, get some roads put back in, and uh, start farming a few different, we'll have a couple of different fo uh, crops on the go. Um, we'll also look at getting animals added pretty early on because I know I've not done animals in the Hout Baler on um, my Hout Baler on series partly because I don't really have room at the minute on my farm to put animal pens but we've got a little bit of room here we've got some we've still got some room down the side here where I could put some animal pens um, I've got some room obviously at the bottom we can put some pens so we may look at adding some certainly some chickens to start with maybe some sheep because i know they tend to be pretty easy maintenance um especially if i if i if i do decide to do anything with that fit that land over in the distance there i could maybe do a big grass field plant a huge grass field so we've got plenty of grass hay potentially silage we could do silage baling getting silage bales which we can then obviously sell or if we get cows later on we can use later on for the cows um i'm a little bit reluctant um at the moment i'm a little bit kind of tempted to avoid cows because the cows do have a bit of an issue in the game at the minute whereby if you fill pour a load of um food into their trough like if you take a load of grass and fill up because the cows ha require tmr um hay i think it is i think it's hay and grass as their their free food options although you only need to give them tmr to get 100 percent production however if you go and put twenty thousand liters of grass in the feed trough you then can't add any hay or any tmr it won't let you it's like the food pen will hold a maximum of twenty thousand liters of food whereas before it used to be a case of it would hold twenty thousand liters of each food so now when you're giving your your animals their food if they require multiple inputs you need to make sure you actually do balance that because if you go and put in 20,000 odd liters of just one type of food you can't give them the other up oh, you can't give them the other foods that they require which means you you kind of hurt yourself i noticed that on um, erlengrat with the, the 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 cow pen that you start with on the erlengrat map the alpine map um uh, that's got grass in it and it's got hay in it but you can't add any TMR because the 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 grass and the hay added together, hundred percent fill the um the the food that is available for the um for the um um for the cows. So I can't give them TMR, which means I can't get a hundred percent productivity out of my cows on Erlengrat. So I tried to place a large cow, a new large cow pen on my Erlengrat map last night, um, with the plan to, that I was going to move the cows into the new large pen, and then I was going to sell the existing pen. And um, go from there, sort of thing. Um, Unfortunately, <laughs> I discovered when I placed the when I went into the build menu to place a pen, a new large cow pen, um, my game crashed with the exact same crash I get whenever I go to the spinnery on Hout Baileron. The uh, failed to create render resource pool or whatever error it is. So um, as soon as the game crashed, before I did anything else last night. I mean, I was I was live streaming at the time. You can check the stream. Um, I quickly went 
to Giant's Bug Tracker, went to my current open bug report about my crashes on Hout Baileron. I added the fact that I now crashed on Hout Baileron with the same error when um, placing the... Um, when trying to place a cow pen. Uh, I added my log file. Um, and basically just said, like, what's going on? You know? This map, Elm Creek, is the only map that my game hasn't crashed on yet. <laughs> and it's the only game, it's the only map that I can sort of play without any, I can play touch wood at the minute without any issues. Um, which is kind of annoying then that the multiplayer is having such a freaking nightmare at the minute because obviously my map, uh, my multiplayer server is using um, this map. And every time I go to log on in the evening, I can't I can't find the server to join it and log into it. <laughs> because every night, obviously, in the evening, once it gets to peak time, when everybody in the world is trying to log on and play farm sim, um, yeah, the game the game gets busted. <laughs> um, the multiplayer gets busted. So, yeah, I might be playing on this map a little bit more over the next few days, which means I might get, obviously, a fair few videos recorded and in the bag um, for you lot to watch and enjoy watching, because at the minute, I'm kind of, I don't want to play on Out Baylor on at the minute, because it's just taking too much time of my time. Um, because the videos keep, because it keeps crashing at various different points, um, um, uh, I just I keep losing video progress. I keep losing my progress. Um, so at the moment, sadly for me, when it comes to the, um, Count Baylor on Mac, I kind of just want to, I want to wait to see if Giants give me a fix, uh, come out with a fix for the crashing. Because if it's taking me three times as long, you know, it's taking me three hours to make a one hour video. That's not good. It's not good for me. Um, and certainly you might have already heard in some of my videos that my temper was a little bit frayed. I was getting a little bit short fused. I was starting to lose my cool a little bit with the game. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to do that if I can help it. You know, I would much rather enjoy the game. <laughs> but, you know, certainly last night when I was trying to stream and the server was acting up. If you watched the first part of last night's stream, I was not a happy person. And I think um, I said quite a few things that were... Um, <laughs> very, very um, frank, very short, you know, I was very, very, you know, very unhappy with Giants, let's just leave it at that. Anyway, folks, thank you for joining me on this episode of Elm Creek. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I will uh, be back very soon, so make sure you've left your likes, your comments in the on the video as you always seem to do at the moment, which is great for me. Obviously, if you're new here, make sure you're subscribed and you've rang that notification bell so you get notified when I upload more lovely content. And I will see you all again very soon. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe for now. Cheerio, everybody. <laughs>